Professor Xiao Wei Zhang from the Department of Industrial Engineering and Logistics Management at HKST. And Professor Zhang's talk is about applying job fusions, stochastic stability, and the limited theories. Well, thanks for the introduction and the invitation for me to give this talk. Uh, well, this is a uh, sort of purely uh, a theoretical development. Uh, there's no real data in this talk. <laughs> and uh, uh, I think the message actually is going to be very, I mean, the idea is very simple. Uh, and I will uh, be finished in probably 15 minutes. Okay. Uh, okay. So uh, this is the outline of this talk. So uh, first, I'll give a very quick introduction about what a, uh, uh, a fine jump diffusion is. And then uh, 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 trying to introduce some result uh, regarding the uh, stochastic stability of these type of processes, and then in the end talk about some limited theorems. In, I mean, to, uh, in particular, the uh, law of large numbers and central limit theorem sort of things. Okay, uh, so the uh, affine jump diffusion actually is a very uh, popular uh, uh, stochastic process model in finance or econometrics. Uh, uh, the fo uh, uh, the famous examples actually include the following, uh, the, the vessel shaker model or the uh, OU process is a simple example of this type of uh, AJD, a fine jump diffusion. Or uh, a CR process uh, for interest rate is, is also a special case. Uh, or even uh, the, uh, the Heston stochastic volatility model is also a special case. And, and also, there are tons of you know, different uh, extensions of the first three uh, uh, models that I just mentioned, okay? So but the extension uh, goes to different ways, uh, including different types of uh, jumps or including, uh, you know, uh, to increase dimensions, for example. Uh, so the, the, the popularity of this type of model, you know, I mean, the uh, fine jump diffusion actually uh, comes from its uh, 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 computational tractability. So, uh, so for example, uh, if you have a stochastic process or in general, if you have a, a uh, a diffusion process. Uh, sometimes you are interested in its, you know, uh, transition uh, density. Uh, for a general uh, diffusion process without any uh, special structure, uh, when you consider its transition density, or you con or you you consider its Fourier transform of this uh, transition density, uh, you have to solve a partial differential equations or system of partial differential equations. That actually would be very very uh, hard. I mean, computationally speaking. Uh, but for this type of very, uh, when you apply, I mean, when you uh, impose this very special structure of fine, uh, then the type of uh, partial differential equations actually will turn out to be a system of ordinary differential equations. So the computation will be uh, uh, hugely faster. Okay, so now I'm going to uh, 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 describe what a fine means. So when you have a stochastic differential equations, or in general, when you have a, a differential equations, I mean, an SDE with jumps, uh, in general, you have, have to specify these three terms. You know, the, the uh, drift term of this SDE, or the variance term, and the jump intensity, okay? For this uh, type of uh, uh, processes, all these three terms are fine in the state variable or linear in the state variable, okay? So we will see the examples uh, now. So first example is the vest check model or OU process. Very, uh, you know, uh, simple examples in any uh, introductory stochastic process uh, course. Uh, so of course this is one dimensional, uh, constant B, beta, uh, uh, sigma, okay? So, uh, and the, this is one simulated path of this process and it is, you know, Intuitively, it is stable in some sense, right? Because it uh, fluctuates around an equilibrium, which is uh, represented by this uh, red dashed line. Okay. And another example is this CR process, or federal diffusion, or square diffusion, depending on you know what uh, background that you are from. Uh, you have this sort of uh, these two processes are very similar. Uh, the only difference is this volatility term. Okay. And the reason uh, for this uh, square root term that appearing here is to make sure that this process is positive almost really, okay? So that you can use it to model interest rate. Uh, and similarly, you know, these two, this is also a uh, simulated sample path. It's also stable, okay? And the reason for these two uh, processes are uh, stable in some sense is because of the fact that the parameter beta is positive. Or in, some, or in other words, these two processes are mean reverting. Okay, you have a long-term mean, 
and the, pro the path of process always try to return to this mean. Okay? Uh, this is actually a uh, sort of a motivation of uh, the work that I'm going to uh, discuss in the next five minutes. Okay, so keep this in mind. The beta is positive. Okay? All right, so uh, this is you know, basically the introduction of these type of processes. And next is uh, the objective of this talk. I'm going to talk about the stochastic stability. Okay, in some sense, you know, uh, whether there, uh, I try to answer the following three questions. Uh, does there exist an equilibrium in some sense? Or, or if it does, uh, how fast does this process convert to this equilibrium? That's the second question. And third one is sort of a follow-up question. If the first two, if, if I mean, uh, if the uh, equilibrium does exist, uh, can we establish some sort of law of large numbers or central limit theorem uh, for these type of processes? And the reason why we are interested in the stochastic uh, stability or long-term asymptotics is because uh, in many existing statistical methods for parameter estimation of these type of processes, uh, you have to have some sort of law of large numbers or central limit theorem to establish uh, the validity of your uh, parameter estimation methods. So for example, you have some uh, uh, maximum likelihood estimator or some estimator from uh, methods of moments or these squares. Okay? And suppose that you assume that your, your observation of the process is uh, sampled at uh, discrete time points but goes to infinity. Okay? That at the end of the day, you're going to form some sort of uh, well, estimated equation. Okay, so H is uh, some sort of equation that you choose uh, for your choice of uh, the parameter estimation. Okay, so and you solve this uh, uh, well, estimated equation, you get an estimate of your of the true true unknown parameter C n. Okay, so now in in statistics. You want at least guarantee that this estimator is consistent, in the sense that as you increase the number of observations, uh, this uh, estimator will convert to the true value. Okay, and this consistent actually requires a lot of large numbers. And similarly, if you want to construct some confidence interval, or you want to measure the uh, estimation error of your of this estimate, you need uh, some sort of uh, central limit theorem. So both theorem actually, uh, you know, if you uh, uh, you know look into the existing literature for all these different uh, type of methods, when they try to prove uh, you know consistency or stochastic normality of the of their uh, uh, parameter estimators, uh, many of them actually assume that the process they tr they are trying to estimate is ergodic. Okay, I will try to define what ergodic means, but in some sense they have to, they always assume that the process is stable. Okay, uh, so this talk is about, you know, we want to uh, not just assume uh, the process is stable, we just want to show or prove that this type of process is indeed stable under some very uh, simple conditions. Okay, that's the contribution of, of this work. Okay, so of course there have been uh, uh, well, a lot of works in this uh, direction, you know, dealing with the stochastic stability of uh, affine jump diffusions. Uh, uh, I just uh, uh, named some representative ones. Uh, at the very beginning, you know, uh, these uh, two papers uh, from Japan, uh, you know, the scientists from Japan, they study a, this type of process looking, you know, looks very similar to an OU process, but the driving force of the process is not a brand motion, but a more general, you know, uh, uh, well, process, okay? Uh, so this paper uh, basically states that this process uh, has a unique uh, station distribution and characterize this distribution using uh, characteristic functions. And this paper uh, proved that this, uh, not only the, this type of process has a unique station distribution, but also the convergence rate to the station distribution is exponentially fast. Okay, and the, the, uh, the approach that they use to prove these results is uh, to take advantage of the fact that this process is very trackable. You can actually write explicitly in closed form the uh, characteristic function or Fourier transform of the uh, transition density of this uh, diffusion process. But if you go beyond that, if you, uh, for example, consider a more general uh, affine jump diffusion, then you, you lose that fact. You cannot write explicitly uh, the Fourier transform. Okay. Uh, so for this 
two papers, they study affine diffusions, but without any uh, well, jumps. And their approach is that they also study the Fourier transform. I mentioned at the beginning that the Fourier transform of this type of process is, uh, can be uh, solved uh, or, or can be uh, computed by solving a system ODEs. Okay, so these two papers actually study uh, the uh, large time asymptotics of the ODEs. Okay, but using this approach, you can only uh, uh, prove that uh, the existence of a stationary distribution, but you cannot prove anything further than that. For example, how fast does this process convert to the stationarity? Okay, you cannot prove that by using, by analyzing, by simply analyzing the asymptotics of ODEs. Okay. So uh, this one uh, also analyzes the uh, uh, ODEs, but I mean, uh, also uh, basically takes a similar approach but uh, analyzing uh, affine diffusions with jumps, uh, but he uh, analyzed only one dimensional case. Okay, so uh, the approach that uh, we take in this talk actually is similar uh, to this paper, a very recent paper, uh, but in this paper, uh, they study a special case, a two dimensional having some special structures, okay? Uh, so, in this, so in this talk, in the next five minutes, what I discuss is the most general case, okay? Uh, even though I do not present it in the most general form, but the result actually holds for the most general case. So for basically for any uh, affine jump diffusions, uh, I'm gonna give a very, very simple condition to guarantee the, uh, the existence of the equilibrium and actually establish the, the convergence rate to this, to this uh, uh, steady state, okay? To motivate the idea, just uh, you know, still come back to the one-dimensional case. So here, I would like, what I consider here is the CR process, okay? But just the one, just add this one additional term to represent the jumps. Uh, and this jump process, I write it in, uh, in the form of a uh, looking, uh, you know, uh, looks like a compound Poisson process, but the difference here is the counting process, you know, the, 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 the process represents a number of jumps, N of T, is not a Poisson process, but a, a process whose uh, jump intensity is state dependent. It, it depends on uh, the value of uh, the process X. Okay? So of course, uh, we can generalize the result to a more uh, uh, Levy uh, type jump processes, but I just uh, keep it simple here. Um, all right, so now let's uh, consider what would go wrong if you add jumps. We have already seen that without the jumps, for the CR process, the proce this uh, process is stable, okay? By the mean reversion, the beta is positive, you have a mean reversion property, the process is simple. So now we add the jumps, we, we, we just ask a question, what would go wrong, okay? Uh, and of course, if anything goes wrong, it must come from the jumps, okay? So in fact, uh, you know, these are the two uh, factors that I can actually determine whether, you, whether your process is stable or not. Okay, so mean reversion is good, but the jumps is something, I mean, in some sense it's bad. So what we want is we want, you know, uh, we want the mean reversion, this, you know, whatever effect that mean reversion causes can somehow dominate uh, the effect that comes from the jumps. That's the only idea that I presented here. It's very simple. And this is the only message that you can take from this talk. If beta, is bigger than this quantity, then the process is stable. That's it, okay? That's, uh, that's the message of this talk. Okay, anything that I discuss later is just the generalization of this message. Okay, so now let's look closely what this condition is. So beta is over here, representing the uh, mean reversion, okay? So what is lambda? Lambda comes from the, uh, this representation in the jump intensity. Okay, it's the coefficient in front of your state variable, lambda. Okay, and expectation of E, uh, I'm sorry, the expectation of Z is the mean size of the jump. Okay, so now if you multiply these two together, you know, basically this quantity represents, uh, in some sense, the combined effect of the frequency of the jump and the size of the jump. Okay, so if you combine these together, you somehow have uh, a way to quantify uh, the effect of the jump that caused. Okay, so what I want is I want the reversion to be bigger than, than the jumps. Okay, this is the sense. Okay, so I want the reversion to dominate the jumps. Okay, uh, and 
I will show that under this condition, the process will be stable. But of course, this is just a statement for the one dimensional case, in particular for this particular process. But in general, for multiple dimensional uh, cases, it's, uh, it's similar. I mean, the message. All right. So this is an example of this process. Okay. So if you look even more closely to this condition, if I make this lambda to be zero, and better to be any positive number, then this condition, of course, holds. Okay. And now I make lambda to be zero, then the jump process itself is simply a compound for some process. Okay? Then the collision basically says, if you have a compound for some process, which, you know, whose jumps are state independent, and if you have a mean reversion, then the process will always be stable regardless how the kappa is, I mean, the, uh, th this term is. Okay? So you can see here, uh, you increase, keeping everything else the same, you increase the value of kappa, the jumps happens more and more frequently, but still, if you return to the equilibrium, okay, you still have the stability. All right, so now what I will do is I will generalize it to uh, the modern dimensional case. All right, so this is a more general representation of the affine jump diffusion in, uh, in high dimension. Uh, you have a SDE here, uh, the drift, uh, mu is the drift function, sigma is the volatility function, and you have the jump process here. And the mu uh, function is a fun, so it's a linear function in a state variable x. Uh, the variance matrix, theta times theta transpose, is also linear in uh, x. So all these, uh, you know, b is vector, beta is matrix, and so forth. And the jump intensity is also linear in X, okay? And the assumption that I pose here is uh, the size of the jump require that the uh, size of the jump, the distribution of the jump uh, size has a pth moment, but the p is simply some positive number. So basically it means we don't really need the jump uh, size to, uh, to, uh, uh, to have a mean. I mean, you, you could have, uh, see, a uh, very heavy teal uh, jump distribution, but uh, still it works. Okay, I mean, actually this is not the uh, most uh, uh, general, uh, the most, I mean, it, uh, this is not the weakest condition that I can come up with. I just uh, keep it simple here. Uh, all right, so let's recall that from the two sides earlier, the uh, two uh, uh, factors that contribute to the stochastic ability is, first, I want mean reversion, which basically means beta must be positive. Okay, a second, I want me reversion to be big. Okay, I want me reversion to be uh, dominate to uh, uh, dominate the jumps. So in one dimensional case, it's very simple. I understand what the party means, I understand what dominance means, but how do I generalize it to a uh, more dimensional case? How do I define possibility in, in, uh, in high dimension? How do I define this dominance? So for the positivity, uh, I'm gonna come back, I'm gonna go back to the ODEs, a very simple ODE theory. If you have a linear, a first order linear ODE in this form, okay, this is, uh, just imagine that B is vector, beta is matrix, uh, ODE system, then in any introductory ODE course, you will uh, learn that this ODE will be so-called asymptotically stable if the matrix beta, the coefficient matrix beta is so-called you know, positively stable. Or in other words, you, want, you require that all the eigenvalue of this matrix has positive real parts. Okay, that's the definition of this uh, uh, party of stability of, uh, of a matrix. So now I'm, I'm going to keep this. I'm going to also use this you know, party of stability to, rep to represent the positivity that I use for the mean reversion okay, in multi-dimensional case. Okay, so how do I represent dominance? So earlier, what I have is beta minus that you know, product is positive. So in high dimension, I change somehow change the definition of the positivity to, you know, uh, to, to this guy. So I'm going to keep it the same. So I'm going to define the dominance in multiple uh, dimensional case in this way. So beta minus this is a vector. Uh, column vector and times this F, uh, lambda, which is uh, column vector, but now I transpose it. So this product is also a matrix. Well, this difference between this matrix to be positively stable or positively stable. So this is my definition of the dominance in the modern initial case. And I actually call this condition as a strong mean reversion condition. 
Okay, it's not only me reverting, but it's very strong. Okay, all right. So uh, after I, you know, uh, you know, now the the result is the following. Okay, so if I have this strong me reverting condition hold, and you can see that this condition is very simple. Okay, and very easy to check. Uh, I can show that this process is so-called exponentially ergodic. Okay, this is a special term, but it basically means that the uh, uh, transition density or transition distribution of the diffusion process, starting from a fixed point x, will convert to its unique stationary distribution function, uh, stationary distribution, uh, exponentially fast. Uh, and this norm is the total variation norm. You know. All right. Uh, so that's it. That's that's the result of this talk. Okay. Uh, and the proof of uh, this result actually uh, uh, take advantage of the so-called uh, the, uh, the the Apanov approach, very uh, common approach in uh, Markov processes. Uh, uh, this is a great reference for this approach. Uh, so to apply this approach, what you need to do is you want to prove some a so-called Lyapunov inequality in the following form. Uh, so A here is the uh, infinitesimal generator of your diffusion or, or jump diffusion process. Uh, very easy to write down. A secondary uh, differential uh, slash uh, uh, for operator. Uh, you want to somehow we want to find in close form or explicitly this function v. Okay, and uh, for a general Markov process to apply this approach uh, for a general Markov process, the difficulty is actually to find this function uh, v. You have to do it by construction. So here, for a fine diffusion, diffusions, this very type, very special uh, type of processes. Uh, we actually can do that. We can construct this function explicitly. And in fact, it's very simple. Uh, recall that we require this matrix to be a positive stable. And there is a very nice property uh, claiming that if you all have a matrix that is positive stable, then you can find a uh, positive definite matrix. We see H. I don't know what H is, but you know it's, it, it does exist, uh, such that this guy is also positive uh, definite. Okay, and the reason I use this property because I'm going to use it to construct my the Apatow function v. Okay, so this is the function that I construct. Very simple. Okay, uh, it just you know uh, somehow you want to rotate. Uh, basically, you, you you change the coordinate system uh, by applying this uh, positive definition matrix H. You 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 define a new norm. I call it H norm. Uh, this norm, of course, is equivalent to the uh, Euclidean norm. Uh, because of the uh, uh, positive definiteness of this matrix, okay, and it, it can be shown fairly easily just by a lot of uh, calculation to show that this is the case, okay. This is the case. Now you see that uh, this term is uh, positive definite, so uh, so that's why x transpose times this matrix times x uh, can be upper and lower bounded by. Uh, Euclidean norm of, of x, okay? And then you divide it by the x, uh, the norm of x, you basically have a constant. So basically what this equation says, when this norm is large, when the norm of x is large enough, the term inside this braces is gonna be negative, some negative constant, okay? So that's why I can show uh, this, uh, you know, you're gonna have a, a negative uh, a constant here, okay? Uh, so, another, one additional remark regarding this condition is that uh, this condition, even though it's a simple, that it, it, is a, it is actually close to, uh, to a necessary condition in the following sense. Okay? So, if I do not impose this uh, property, or if I you know, uh, consider the opposite, for example, in this one dimensional case, if I want this uh, quantity to be actually negative instead of positive, you can actually show that when you do so, this process is going to be transient. Okay, transient basically means you, uh, the process does not have equilibrium, so when you let time t goes to infinity, this process is going to you know, uh, drift away to infinity. Okay, so that's why, I mean, even though I cannot show rigorously that this condition is indeed necessary, 
But at least from this counter example, you can see that this condition is, uh, cannot be, uh, at least cannot be relaxed in general. Okay. Uh, then, uh, given uh, the uh, exponential organicity, you can actually show uh, you know, uh, strong law of large numbers or even functional central limit theorem. Uh, one remark about these two theorems is that you know, to prove these two is kind of uh, uh, using very common technique. There's nothing new here. Uh, but only remark that I want to see here is that uh, you actually do not need ex uh, well, exponential organicity to have uh, strong law of large numbers. You only need the existence of the uh, station distribution. Okay, so all, all, all positive, a uh, positive recurrence will be suffice uh, for the strong law of large numbers. But for the central limit theorem, you do need the exponential organicity. You you want the uh, process to convert to the equilibrium fast enough. Otherwise, at least uh, from the existing mathematical tools, you cannot prove uh, the functional central limit theorem without uh, the exponential organicity. Okay, so I guess I just end my talk. Thank you. Thank you very much for a very nice result. Well, um, have you come across the uh, similar result stability condition for the uh, what we call the free half model? Uh, free for, half. For, uh, sorry, what? You free? know the, um, for example, the Heston model. We call yeah, it the yeah. square root model. Right. Square model. You yeah. Remember the uh, the C, if you consider it as a CEV process, yeah. the gamma, oh, right, 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 the right, power right. is what three yeah, over yes, two. Yes. Yeah. What we call the free half model. Yeah, yeah, okay. So have you come across similar results on the stability condition? Um, um, I mean, I haven't uh, considered myself. <laughs> okay, but, but uh, um, one suggestion is because well, there's a relation between uh, free half is not exactly R phi, yeah. but the reciprocal of a free half model is an R phi mod, R okay. phi class. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, one suggestion is what you, you try to extend your technique, whether you, if you consider the reciprocal of the free halves. I see. Whether that can be carried over. I see, I see. Okay, yeah. okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah.